click. That's right, six shots. Believe it or not, I have waited 10 years to make this video. Let's get started on the Colt Diamondback 22 LR. As I mentioned earlier, I have been chasing this revolver for 10 years, um, probably pretty seriously, probably the past five to seven years. This is the six inch 22 LR model of the Colt Diamondback. Of course, yes, they also made the Colt Diamondback in the 38 Special, which I own one of those also, but I also wanted a 22 LR. These are much more expensive than their 38 uh, Special Sisters and they actually made them in three different barrel lengths, one two and a half inch, four inch, and this one that you see in front of me is the six inch. This is the harder one to find, in my opinion, in good shape. Uh, this is actually considered the deluxe model. It has a vented rib across the top and it also has a widened hammer. Now this revolver I could not have possibly owned without my friends from Rock Island Auction. They contacted me a couple of months ago and says, hey, you know, in the May auction that is coming up, there are actually four or five of the six inch Colt Diamondbacks uh, that are, will be in the auction. Now, I just didn't want any old six inch Colt Diamondback. I wanted, I hate this term, but I wanted a safe queen. I wanted one in 98% or better because after I get through making this video, I doubt very seriously I will ever shoot this revolver again. So I went on their website and I found the one that I wanted, which was this one. This one is actually considered 99% condition. This is collector's grade and anything with collector's grade, you're going to pay a premium and uh, I put in a reserve on there and I guess a couple of weeks later when the auction was happening a nice young lady called me and this was the transaction of me actually winning this revolver at their auction. My 1864 is up so we are up after this. All right. And you have a um, cover me bid of 2500 is that correct? Yeah I do not want to go any higher than that. Eighteen hundred. Eighteen hundred. You in? Nineteen hundred. You in? In. Twenty two fifty. Are you in? In. In. All right, you're in for twenty two fifty. Still in. Good job, honey. Congratulations. All right, I got my Colt Diamond back. <laughs> Good job. Thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. All right, you have a great day. Yes, ma'am, you too. Woo! Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Yes, I spent over $2,200 on this revolver, but let me explain something. Uh, like I mentioned before, anything collector's grade, uh, you're going to pay a premium. And they made these revolvers from 1966 to 1988. According to the serial number on this little revolver, this was made in 1986. So I was about seven years old when this particular firearm was manufactured. Now, they have become highly collectible the past six or seven years because of a TV show called The Walking Dead. And this looks like a Python, a miniature version of Python. It is actually a scaled down version of the Python, but the Python is actually on the I-frame, the Colt I-frame. And this one is actually on the D-frame. The D is frame is the exact same frame that you would find on your, uh, your Colt Detective uh, and Detective Special revolvers. They are very good shooters. And like I mentioned before, this is a six shot revolver. Before we go any farther, let's do a little bit more shooting. I'm shooting some CCI clean ammo. This is subsonic ammo. Since this will be a safe queen, I don't want to shoot some real high velocity rounds through it. It probably won't hurt it, but you get a lot of muzzle wear when you start shooting some high velocity and hyper velocity rounds. I want to keep this revolver as close to 99% as I possibly can and as clean as I possibly can. So after I make this video, I will be spraying this uh, revolver down with some ballistol and putting it in a gun sock and probably never shooting again, taking it out every once in a while and just drooling over it so they don't have to wipe it off once more. Let's go out at 100 yards. I don't know how well you guys can see that target way out there at 100 yards. The sun is just beating down on it, but 
Let's see if we can slap some steel with 100. Hit. That's a hit. 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 Nice. Six for six. I may eventually try to find one uh, that is in probably about 70% condition. That way I won't feel as bad bringing it onto the range and putting about a thousand rounds a day through it. You're probably thinking $2,200 is a lot of money for a revolver. It is. Um, it, $2,200 is a lot of money for any firearm. But I guess back in the 80s, you could purchase these things for around $250 to $300, probably even cheaper in some places. Now, you can find a good used one, you know, in about 70% condition for about $1,200. Like I said, they've skyrocketed in price. But I've also seen these revolvers sell for over four and $5,000 with the box unfired. So, you know, I've kind of jumped on the Colt snake gun bandwagon a little late, but it's never too late to start collecting. You know, I'm a big fan of the Colt Woodsman. Uh, I have four or five Colt Woodsmen. I have Colt Huntsmans. I have Colt single action revolvers such as the Colt Frontier Scout. And now I have a good double action representation of the Diamondback. The sights on the Diamondback are fully adjustable for windage and elevation. I'm not touching them. I think this revolver shoots at about two o'clock. So it shoots probably about an inch and a half high at 30 feet. And it also shoots about a half inch to the right. I'm not changing these sights. I'm not touching these sights because the last thing I want to do is get a flathead screwdriver in there and slip and mess up the beautiful finish on this revolver. Now it does have beautiful walnut grips and the checkering on these things are tight and crisp. There are no scratch marks or scuff marks, which you find a lot of time uh, with these older revolvers. Some, it's just as simple as laying it down hard on the table can dent this checkering and can totally degrade and take off some of the value of this fine firearm. Now, is it the greatest double action 22 LR ever created? No, I'm not going to go there. Um, a lot of people compare this to the Smith & Wesson Model 17, and I own the Model 17. I love the 17. I actually own a Model 617, which is the stainless version of the 17. A lot of people say that the Colt uh, series of snake guns don't fit their uh, hands as well as Smith & Wesson's, and I tend to agree with them. I've got very large hands, and the, set, uh, the Model 17 Smith actually feels better in my hands, but I can sell this one and buy three Model 17s. It's all about collector grade um, for me because I have been collecting firearms for 20 years, long before I started making YouTube videos here. And this is the one uh, 22 LR revolver that I've always wanted. And thanks to my friends at Rock Island actually made this possible. There's a few more firearms on my bucket list that I want. Um, what about you? I want a Winchester Model 70 Pre-64 and a 308. I used to own one a long time ago. It actually wasn't in the 308, it's actually in the 257 Roberts, but I had to sell it to buy an air condition for my house. Uh, <laughs> I guess this is probably about 10 or 12 years ago. But this one, this one will never leave my collection whatsoever. And if you're looking for that bucket gun uh, that you know, we'll finish your collection. Go check out my friends at Rock Island Auction. I guarantee you they will have it in an auction coming up. Now, you're probably asking yourself one question and one question only. Well, probably a couple of questions right about now that you know that I spent over $2,200 for a revolver. But with all 22s, I, there's one test that I have to make sure it will pass, and that's will it split a playing card.